Welcome to another episode of Ask Mr. Wonderful. And guess who I've got with me? You've met him before. Teddy is an absolute author of great work on watches. I love him. I love his, his depth of knowledge. But you know, we talk so much about really expensive pieces all the time. So I, I decided to challenge Teddy. I said, listen, let's both go into our collections and come up with inexpensive pieces that are spectacular watches. Something you'd be proud to wear on your wrist that you don't have to spend a fortune on. And I really mean it. I think everybody says, oh, you have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a watch collection. Not true. You can get a very diverse and beautiful set of dials, very inexpensively. So let's go to Teddy. Well, thank you for that flattering intro. Well, I appreciate I, it. Well, it's true. We've done some great work together, mostly on the really high-end Maisons yes. and all kinds yes. of brands that cost a fortune. But now it's time to go the other direction. Show me what you think is great value. So I, what I did was I mixed a few different things. So I had some stuff, some personal watches, stuff that we sell on our site. But I wanted to kind of start from like the lower end to begin with. So I kind of call these like gateway drug kind of watches. And you will mention price, right? Yes, I will mention prices. Okay. So for all these, these are all sub $500. And yeah. these are watches that people... Sub $500. Sub $500. So I want Ichi you to, wa wa caramba. I thought it would be fun <laughs> to just see how you would react to them. So a couple and, places... I mean, I have to ask you right out of the gate. Yes. If you're buying a watch for $500, should you assume it's not collectible? You should assume it's not a great investment? Or should, should you just write it off over time? So I would not classify it as an investment. This is just a fun piece. This okay. is just a fun watch. Just fun have. to watch, 500 bucks. Fun watch. Some of these do retain their value reasonably well yeah. compared to other things under $500 yeah. what you're maybe going to buy. But that's not the reason why you're getting it. You're getting it just to maybe get into this love of watches for the first time. And will we know some of the brands? Absolutely will. So for this first range, I mean, one that's probably going to be very popular is Timex. And this is, this is the entry level of entry level. So this is $260. This is the Timex Marlin. So back in the 1960s, you might have been familiar with seeing some of the Marlins and the department stores. Back in stores. the 1960s, I couldn't afford a $200 watch. Well, that was probably back then. I mean, maybe talking 10, 10 bucks, you know, back then. Wow. So, they, they just, so, so the cl you know, it's, it's retro vintage now. Exactly. That's so the, beautiful. So that watch has been so popular yeah. for newer enthusiasts getting into the hobby for the first time. So 260 bucks, you got a Miyota caliber inside of it. And it's, it's, it's just fun to put on your wrist and say, yeah, it's a Timex. Yeah, it's just fun. <laughs> you know, like if, hey, I'm just I like you know, it. Like going like out it. and about. So that's, that's cool. That's a good entry door. So yeah. a couple other places to look. So this is a brand that has become very much uh, an entry door into the world of entry level divers. Yeah. It's Orient. So Orient is a Japanese brand. Yeah. They're actually under the Seiko Epson Corporation. So yeah. that is called the Kano. That one's a little bit more striking. It's got a red dial. That yeah, has that's more. definitely a diver watch. Yes. Okay. So around two fifty to three hundred dollars for those. Are you kidding? Yeah. It's, what you do you think? Would, for two hundred fifty dollars, would you drown if you went down with the tank on? No. That's a two hundred meters water resistance. Very capable. Wow. You know, and so it's. Okay, that's a surprise to me. That's a pretty good deal. That's a spectacular looking piece. For that price? 260 bucks. We're not talking second hand. These are... This is brand new. Brand new retail. Brand new retail. Factory pricing. Absolutely. Factory warranty and all. This is a whole new world no one knows about, Teddy, you've discovered here. I don't oh, people think... People know about it. I, I don't know if you know about no, it. No, I don't. <laughs> $250, it's... It's No, I haven't looked at too many watches for 250 bucks. Two right. other places to look. I know you're in love with dials. Yes. Seiko to me. Okay. You know, you, you, you can't, I, you can't go wrong with Seiko. I want you to look at this watch. So this is the SRPF 41. This is, how much, I mean, look at that dial. Just look at it close. I mean. This is not a grand Seiko. This is no, a Seiko. No, it is a Seiko. And that's an important distinction to yeah. make. But the dial on that, what do you mean? Spectacular. Automatic watch. Automatic watch. Price point? 480 bucks. Wow, you're just taking my breath away. That, by the way, that looks like it's worth 1,200 times more. It's just. I mean, beautiful. that dial is. Spec I mean, that is n uh, technically it is. Well, they're famous for their dials. It can't be one of their hand painted dials for that price. No, impossible. no, but but, but it, they've emulated the look. Yes, they have, and it's very well executed. So there's another very popular series in this range, which is called the Cocktail Time. So they yeah. basically replicate uh, inspiration from like Japanese cocktails and. Yeah. Probably the best dials you're going to find for four. Really, bucks. really nice piece. I mean, I have to admit that's a great deal. But I always felt, always Seiko, you get value. You do. Yeah, and, you, you know, do. I buy a lot of Grand Seiko product because it's Patek Philippe quality almost. You know, that's the way I look at it at, at a fraction of the price. Okay. Seiko is. Uh, I mean, people love Seiko. They that's absolutely cool. love Seiko. So I thought that as a guy who loves dials, figured that was a good one. So yeah. this is a Bulova Lunar Pilot. You might be thinking. This kind of looks like a speed. Know master. the brand, everybody does. Cool backstory behind this watch. So yeah. this was a watch that actually went to the moon as well. No way. 1971, Apollo 15, David Scott. Wore You're this kidding. Watch. And how this story goes. You're a walking how, encyclopedia. I don't know how much 
of this is fact or fiction, but apparently he had a Speedmaster on. Yeah. The crystal popped off. And when oh, he, I heard this and when, story. And when he got off the lunar module, he brought his own personal Bulova lunar pilot. So that's the cool thing about he this. He had it as a backup watch. He had it as a backup is watch. Is there any truth to that story? There is truth to that story that he actually brought it on because it actually sold at auction in 2015 for $1.3 million. And what's the original factory price? This, on the bracelet right here, we had it for $600. Wow. So, yeah. so it went from 600 to over a million. Well, that's for his personal I watch. get it, but it's the same piece. But it does have some really yeah. interesting, you know, backstory to it. It also yeah. has a high frequency quartz. So traditional quartz is going to os oscillate like 32,000 times per second. That's like 262,000 times. Yeah, that's a second. very attractive so, piece at a great price. I mean, I think what's good about this is you're really opening my eyes up to some very interesting price points here. So that's getting in, so about 600 bucks there. Yeah. Now once you go to a next phase up, okay. some other stuff that you might think is cool. This one is not probably the thing that's going to epitomize the brand, yeah. but it's got some cool backstory. So this is called the Ventura from Hamilton. So this is I'm middle. well aware of that. That's a very famous style, yes. very famous, uh, you know, every, everybody that's into watches knows this piece in terms of the shape of that. Yes, and it was, it really became popular. I mean, it was unveiled in 1957, but uh, Elvis actually wore it yeah. famously. So it was kind of been claimed as the, as the Elvis And so watch. did the Jetsons. <laughs> it, it does look like a futuristic 1950s, yeah, you know, it, exactly. it is absolutely that. But if you look towards the future, this is, I think, what people were and looking at. And price point? 840 bucks. Incredible. It's quartz. Can you get it today for that price? Yes. Yeah, we sell it. Um, it's a pretty cool watch. Yeah. That's beautiful. Very, very cool. Did Elvis just have this little waveform on it, too? So the story behind it, it was actually the first watch with a battery. And they had this weird setup where it was using magnets and then it had a traditional balance wheel set. And that's how that watch would work. A lot of them didn't function very properly. No kidding. So, you know, that so sounds they, they, like a horrific <laughs> design. So they transitioned over yeah. to quartz, which that one's going to be a quartz watch, but yeah. you know, high accuracy. This one I thought would be interesting because you're from Canada. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is a Canadian brand. You're kidding. Marathon. So Marathon. Made in Canada? So they make their watches in Switzerland. Yeah. They were founded in Canada. Yeah. They got the rise in 19 really became very popularized in this military style watch that you're seeing here in 1941 because yeah. it supplied watches for the Allied forces, uh, both for Canadian and American armed really? forces. Okay. And all of their watches are really built for that spec. So this is called their government search and rescue. And they're still being used by military personnel to this day. Use tritium. It's a dive watch. It's, it's a tool watch. What I have found a lot of collectors who really- you Tell me the price again? That's going to be $1,200. Wow. That's a great value and a very striking piece. I mean, this is a honking piece of metal. It is honking. It yeah. looks, so you see how it's like seated very low in the dial, yeah, like the yeah. dial seems seated very low? Yeah. That's done with intention. So what that watch uses is tritium. So tritium is different than what you'll probably see on most of these watches that use Superluminova or Luminova. Yeah. Tritium is a constant illuminating, illuminating material. So it'll have actual gas tubes inside there that's going to house that tritium. And why? Yeah people in the armed forces like this is because it's constantly illuminating, it doesn't need to be charged. So when you're in very dark environments, it's going to, of course, never fail you. Fantastic, so like really deep underwater. Right? Yes, very deep underwater, yeah. and the reason they have to make it so, uh, kind of like they step the dial in a way and have it seated so low is And have divers tubes. adopted this? Yes, absolutely. That's Amazing it. price point. Yes, okay. so I thought that'd be interesting because you had that connection to Canada. All right. Another place to look, I love this brand. Yeah. It's called Junghans. So Junghans is kind of classic Ger Germany. It almost looks Swatch-like, you know? It does have a little bit of that. So it's mid, you know, 1950s, there was a, a Swiss designer, Max Bill. Yeah. He was a very famous architect. He went to the Baja School of Design. I am a huge fan. This I could see the elements of Baja in there, for th sure. This was a watch that, not this specific one, but Max Bill, he was went from creating wall clocks first yeah. for the brand, and then transitioned into wristwatches. That's nice. Price point? 1300 bucks, 1325 Not bad, not bad. That is actually very unique as a dial. It is. There's really, Beautiful piece. There's really nothing else like that. So when people are looking for that, they call it minimalism, but yeah. I, I, there's minimalism as a pursuit. Some and minimalism Movado that. kind of thing, you know? A little so, bit of that. Yeah. But I mean, this is true Bauhaus design, true principles from that school, from an iconic designer. I, I like it. Tell it's me cool. about, let me pick some dials here. Yes, no, actually, T please. Tell me about this one. This is also very interesting. So. One of my favorite brands, and I will I don't want to say his name, but yeah. last time that we had dinner in Miami, we were sitting with a man in the industry that was, I think we both hold in high regard. I asked him, what brands yeah. do you respect? Yeah. He said brands like Rolex, yeah. Paddock. Of course. You know what other brand he mentioned? This one right here. What is it? Nomos Glasuta. So they're a new German brand. You're kidding. 1990 they started. 
Wow. Right after the you know the fall of the Berlin Wall, and you know they emerged very much like other brands in Germany at that time. But they're doing some fantastic things. So this is a in-house caliber. You're looking at thirty-seven hundred bucks for this. Yeah. Very much a lot of the same type of inspirations as thirty-seven hundred dollars. You're kidding. Now a brand like this, are you going to buy this direct from the online from the company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we sell it as well. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing about this one. What's going on here with this? So this is fun. All right. So this is their Metro. It's called, and this is a power reserve. So yeah. what they've done is there's a little aperture in the dial, and it will actually have three discs with gears on it. Yeah. So as you rotate, see see what's happening there? So yeah. See that little red? It's slowly disappearing. So what that's doing is it's indicating to me, once that red disappears, that this thing is fully wound. So it's just oh, a cool Oh, so way it's a power reserve indicator. Yeah, it's Inter really interesting. That's a to very see. great idea. It's very cool. That is cool. They're making their own movements. This also, they're actually making their own escapements as well. Wow. And there's, for around, that's amazing. For around three, three is this grand. So East Berlin type thing? Where did this come yeah, from? Yeah, so they're in Glasshut. They're in Glasshut. OK. Very interesting. That, so see same, that? same city hey, as tell, uh, tell me the price again. 3780. Yeah, amazing. That's fantastic. So the okay, real more. watchmaker. Real yeah, watchmaker. That is that you know, that's that's very interesting. L let me pick one more then yeah, we'll go over and I'm gonna show you some of mine. Yeah, please. Okay, looking for something. You know, Tissot is always a classic starter watch. It is. I, I forgot to mention Tissot yeah. at the beginning. So yeah. that's the new PRX, and that has been very popular as of late. It, you probably can guess why. I mean you can see the inspiration being drawn from that integrated steel sport style yeah, bracelet. Yeah. Price point? What would you guess? Twelve hundred. What if I told you it's three hundred and seventy-five bucks? Wow, that's a phenomenal deal with a brand that's well known in Europe. Yes. Maybe not as much here, but you know, you go to Switzerland and walk around Geneva. Everybody knows it's Tissot. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, case finishing. Yeah. I think it's way above what you're going to find. It's almost uh, Grand Seiko-ish in polish. Uh, it's beautifully done. It's very nice. For that price, these are incredible deals. It's a great idea, Teddy, to cover it this way. Absolutely great. Yeah, because I think everybody, like you said, they deserve to own a nice watch. I, I agree. I don't think it should be limiting because I guarantee somebody's buying that watch today is coming in here and buying a Rolex, you know, or you know whatever they're going to be. I understand, but let's let's talk. Okay, let's talk. All right, about, let's get. Let's, let's go to an entry point. level watch right here. This is a um, <laughs> rainbow. <laughs> From Rolex. I'm sorry, I just can't. No, I know, but I mean, <laughs> let, let, you know, it's it's a beautiful piece. It's very unique. A lot of work goes into actually getting this, this four degree separation of the rainbow itself with these jewels. Now, it's not exactly entry level entry level pricing. It's about 150 thousand, but they're tr because they're very hard to find. They traded about 420 thousand dollars. A good way to start. Now, you can either send your whole family to college, buy a house, or get this watch. I'm just having some They're fun. They're going to a good school, too. No, I know. I'm just They're having going to some elite fun. They're school. But <laughs> I buy a watch like this because it's very collectible as an investment. Obviously, wow. that appreciation from retail to the current prices, it's rarity. And I'll do one more fun one just because it's fun to show off a little bit. Um, I have the Tiger, uh, a great entry level diamond piece. That's like looking into the sun. I know. You can't really tell the time. You need sunglasses. But <laughs> it, it's, I, I didn't used to do bling since I last saw you. I was very much against bling, but I've been turned on to, because I'm living in Miami now, I need some really trashy stuff. <laughs> That's and this is this is it. I mean, this really looks ridiculous. That is going to catch the eye. I could imagine that on the beach or taking a walk. Yeah. That just it yeah. gets a little. This with jeans on and a T-shirt. That's the look I'm looking for here. Ooh. But also, you know, a ridiculous price. However, it doesn't mean that that's all I buy. I'm a collector. So let me show you something. I think you can appreciate this. I love this. You tell me what this is. Longjean Conquest. Yeah. What do you think the price is? Well, I, I know it's around a grand. It's about twelve hundred bucks, probably. Or? Yeah, I am so so. I'd buy dials, and I don't really care what the price is, including going down to something you know under two thousand or a thousand dollars. This dial is stunning. It's a beautiful piece, and it reminds me very much of this dial. You know, the sixtieth anniversary beautiful. version. They call it the Superman. Also very affordable, very affordable. But you can see similarities in terms of look and feel of that, can't you? Mm -hmm. but this is around six thousand dollars. But these are some of the watches I wear every day because I just appreciate the beauty. It doesn't mean everything I've got uh, has to be a ridiculous price. Now, here's something I don't think you've seen ever because there are none. Yeah, anywhere. tell me about this watch. This you is know the brand. You know the look and feel. This is mm -hmm. the Pilot IWC, right? Um, I think there's a total of, I can't remember, I think it's uh, 1,100 pieces, but they were only sold to individuals associated one way or another with Lebanon. So they were sold in the United Arab Emirates and the boutique in, in, in Beirut. 
to offset the cost of that horrible disaster when the boat blew up in Beirut. Mm -hmm. Now, my mother was Lebanese, my father was Irish, and I was very fortunate to know one of the uh, members of the royal family of UAE, and I asked on his behalf, because he knew my family, could they approach IWC and allocate one to America? Um, they actually said no, they couldn't, but they would arrange for me to get one through my friend. So this is only a $6,000 watch, but one of a kind. One of a kind, and the Lebanese logo of the cedar of Lebanon on the back. I wear this all the time. It reminds me of Lebanon and my mother. But you have to say that's a beautiful piece. Stunning. Yeah. I love the, the green. It's yeah. fantastic. The green is it's green black depending on the light. So again, a piece in my collection that is not a crazy price. But I'm looking for something unique as a collector, and this certainly fits into that category. So what I'm saying is you don't have to buy a huge, expensive collection. You can find collectible watches at very reasonable prices. I also consider this uh, Superman, this Grand Seiko 6th anniversary, to be highly collectible because they only made a certain number of them, and I think in the years ahead this will appreciate in value and look terrific. So that was the theme. Oh, Teddy, one other watch here. Um, this one hurts a little bit. Yes, it should. If you watched our previous video, you came over from Teddy's video. I'm going to do the 57 Super yeah. Ocean, and I'm going to do the ball. When you're not compliant, you have to be punished, Teddy. And now that's going to happen right here, my friend. Yeah, I want to make it painful. You saw that Teddy broke the rules in our contest, and his punishment was to let me buy this watch, which I did for 35 I was given incorrect information. I, I Stars and stripes. And I know you know this, Mark. Tell us about this brand. I mean, in some way, you can kiss a goodbye by explaining what it is. So Bulova is a, you know, a great, rich history brand here in America, founded by Joseph Bulova. He was an American immigrant, and they were really trailblazers in adopting a lot of interesting styles and also just ways and methods of marketing products during the you know, mid-20th century. They were the first brand to actually uh, have the first TV yet. I don't know if you ever knew that, during the World Series. I do remember. Yeah. I do remember. So they did that. They were also very uh, active in TV, you know, sponsoring Frank Sinatra. And then once you got to the 1970s, like this piece, yeah. you start getting into these crazy chronographs that are just very centric and fun. But and this, this is really, they call it the Stars and Stripes because it emulates an American flag. You got, I, I got like these hands that look like rockets. It's, 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 it's fun. It's a lot of fun, and I think it's going to look terrific on my wrist. And I love the fact that now I'm investing in vintage. I don't do a lot of that, but when you get something so unique, plus I can take it out of your collection into mine, which makes it extra special, that makes it a story watch. And a little painful for you, I realize, but for me, it it's absolutely wonderful. I will tell the story to everybody that doesn't see this video. If you see, you know, Teddy broke the rules, <laughs> very bad boy, and I got this watch as a result. It's absolutely spectacular. Thank you, Teddy. Look, I've had a wonderful the time. So, the wound was just cut 30 minutes ago. No, it's, 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 it's great. I, I, listen, the pain will eventually go away as you see me wear this all over the place. It's, it's fine. But I really love it, and thank you very much for bringing it up and showing it to me. It was actually great. Of course. Anyways, thank you so much. You're such a knowledge of, of, of what your, your, your knowledge of watches makes it really interesting because I think what you did today was important. I spent so much time talking about the crazy prices on watches, which have been appreciating as yes. an asset class mm -hmm. you know, very well. But it, it makes it, you have to take time to go back and look at what's available at any price. And you've brought forward some amazing pieces at incredible prices that have really opened my eyes up to maybe, look, there's a lot to be done at under $1,000. In fact, you know, under $500, fantastic watches. Yeah, no, there's a lot to have. I mean, there's other great brands on here too, like an Oris, for example, which is fantastic, that $2,000 range, Zinn, Rado, micro brands like a Formex and Manta. I mean, it's there's, wonderful. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot out there. So you don't need a ton lost. of money. You don't need a ton of money to actually get into collecting watches. That's the key. Think about that. You can start at a very low price point. Diversity of dial, diversity. So everything's different in your collection. That's wonderful. Look for things that don't look like the other watches you have and build mm -hmm. a collection, as I love to call it. Teddy, thank you so much. Always it's been a pleasure great working with you today. I look forward to our next journey wherever it takes us. See where it goes, as always.